Hello again folks and welcome to another tale from the Wood Library. Now this week's exciting episode is all about remaking or rebuilding a cold frame, a seed raising frame that I've had in the garden for a couple of years. Now this is made from an aluminium window, here's a glass window that uh, my wife and I spotted uh, on the side of the road a couple of years ago and uh, as we were driving past so I stopped and put it in the back of the car and thought mm, I, I think I've got a good idea what I'm going to use that for. So uh, it became uh, turned into a cold frame and I used uh, 200 mil by 50 mil deep sleepers uh, to build around it and to create the frame. But it's on the ground uh, and it's in a position, as I say, in the yard where it doesn't get a huge amount of sun. So the idea is to uh, build some trestles for it so that it comes up to waist height. We've got some timber here which is 125 uh, mil high more or less, 19 mil thick, so it's, it's fairly lightweight pine. And these are going to form the edges uh, around this kind of box on top of which uh, we're going to pop the glass roof which will be hinged of course so that we can open it and get in there and tend to the little babies as they grow. Uh, so that's the idea and I've got some Oregon uh, that a neighbour gave me uh, which will suit the trestles or the legs really nicely. So let's go ahead and get on with it and see how we go. First thing to do is uh, trim up the edges of some of the boards. Uh, that I have because they always get a bit dinged uh, so it's nice to start off with something that's a little bit more square than uh, what it was like when it came out of the shop um, and uh, that's just a very quick job on the table saw here on the uh, compound saw uh, to smarten up the edges. Now I found a bed base in the street uh, a few months ago and this was chunkier timber uh, in quite good condition so I screeched to a halt and grabbed it and as you see here, just uh, took off the uh, location holes that the bed base had just to fit it into. It's one of those cheap uh, furniture bed bases um, and you just chop the ends off. And these are going to come very handy for the vertical supports. Uh, so here I am, um, and as you can see, some of the pine boards are actually water damaged. They've been sort of sitting in water for, for a while when we had a bit of a flood back in February. So they're not uh, the most beautiful things to look at, uh, but they're gonna work out fine. And so we're just uh, measuring up uh, and making sure I get the drill holes correct. And I just do most of that freehand as it seems to work. Um, if I want to make it look really pretty, I'll probably measure it with a ruler and a set square. Uh, but as I say, uh, it's sometimes nice to do things like countersink uh, the timber, even though uh, the speed of the drill and the the screw will, will bring the screw head into the timber only because it's quite soft. Uh, I like to have everything looking reasonably sort of professional and ship shape. Uh, even though uh, it's uh, indoor, a lot of this is indoor furniture that's going to go outdoors and is being screwed together with uh, uh, chipboard screws, which of course uh, I get from Aldi uh, whenever they're on special. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, uh, you get through a lot. And judging from some of the projects that I've already done uh, that have been out in the yard, out in the garden for a number of years, they seem to last uh, at least as long as the timber does, uh, if not a little bit longer. So uh, they're, they're not a bad sort of, uh, I suppose, alternative. Because the boards on the outside are a little bit on the flimsy side, they're only 19 mil, not as strong as the previous cold frame, which was made out of <laughs> sleepers, um, I'm using quite long screws just to make sure everything gets a good grip and doesn't fall apart. Taking into account, of course, the, the corner braces that you can see here are slightly lower than two times the height of the pine planking here. So I'm using uh, 80 mil screws uh, and I've dropped the height of the top one, of course, so that it marries up with the top of that corner brace. And that seems to work quite well. I'm flipping the box around, this is just putting the uh, end boards on. And again, there wasn't any particular uh, reason to do uh, the sides or the ends first, because it all uh, hopefully in the end slots together quite nicely. I normally try and clamp it all up first, uh, just reasonably loosely, uh, so that I can see that it's all going to fit and I haven't made any uh, mistakes. This was like a last minute addition where I made a sort of a picture frame and screwed it onto the base out of the last remaining bits of the bed base that I picked up in the street. So that gives it uh, not only extra strength, structural strength, but it also gives me a ledge to screw the wire mesh down on, which you'll see in a moment. So the lid is very slightly sloped just to allow a little bit of water runoff. I put in a little support here 
so that it can be propped up and decided to give away the uh, the, the legs, the legs idea, because that was just a lot more work, and bought some concrete cement BESA blocks, which work just as well, um, and of course they're very portable. And you can see here the wire mesh has gone in, it's been screwed down tight, ready to support the, uh, the ag uh, cloth that's going to go in there, and then of course the seedlings when we're ready to sow them.